Hello there, Machine Dana from Stream Essentials. I hope you guys are doing really, really well. So the kind people at Pulsoid app have sent us through a heart rate monitor and we're going to be giving one of these away as part of this video. So we're in early October now, hopefully within a week or so's time, we're going to do a draw so that you can have one of these in time for Halloween. If you're interested in entering into that giveaway, just click the Gleam link below and all the details about the giveaway will be on there and you can be in with a chance of winning this device and then being able to display your heart rate on your stream. So in this video, we've got quite a lot to cover. I'm going to be covering some of the cool integrations that Pulsoid have done because that can further enhance the experience that your viewers get over and above just displaying your heart rate on stream, which in itself is obviously a pretty cool thing. I'm going to be going through what you get for the free and enhanced bro subscription from Pulsoid. And of course, I'll show you exactly how you can set this up on your stream. I'll be using OBS Studio for this, but it is compatible to any streaming software that uses browser sources. For example, XSplit, Streamlabs OBS, you name it. So here at Stream Essentials, provide loads of different tips, tutorials, gear, and advice all around streaming. Feel free to check the website out below. You can also check out my YouTube channel on the link above as well. Feel free to subscribe to both of the channels. And if you find this video useful, we'd really appreciate if you just hit that like button. It only takes a second, but it helps us out loads. Let's do this. So first of all, what do you even need to get your heart rate displayed on stream? Well, it goes without saying, but I'll say it anyway. You'll need to decide where you're even going to stream to. But just worth noting that you can do this on Twitch, YouTube gaming, Facebook gaming, basically anywhere that can receive a broadcast from a software. And moving on to software, you're also going to need some sort of broadcast software. It's compatible with any broadcasting software that can essentially use browser sources, which given that virtually all of them do use browser sources, the Pulsoid browser source will be compatible to basically every single broadcasting software. Today, I'm going to be demoing it in OBS Studio, but I've also tried this on Streamlabs OBS and a number of different platforms too, and I can say it works really, really well on all of them. So once you've got those basics out of the way, you're going to need some sort of heart rate monitoring device. All this will do is push a little tick via Bluetooth to your phone, and it's your phone that then does the hard work to push this data through the cloud and magically this displays it on stream. But to enable all of the API work to happen, you do need to install the Pulsoid app on your phone and it's Android or Apple compatible. That then can push it through a browser source, which you then add to your stream. It all sounds really complicated. It's really not. It's quite straightforward, actually. You can have this set up in like five minutes or so, but you do need to set up an account with Pulsoid and you do need to make sure that you're downloading the app. So what heart rate monitors are actually compatible here? Well, rather than me explain exactly which devices are compatible, compatible. I'm just going to say, go to Pulsoid's blog here. They've got a really comprehensive list of devices that are compatible. We'll also list some compatible devices in the description below. These will be Amazon affiliate links. So if you do purchase them through Pulsoid's website or through the links below on this channel, you'll be supporting either of those two. Now I've actually used Pulsoid last year on the Wahoo ticker and I know this works really, really well, but there is also a cheaper option. And this is the one that we're going to be giving away today, which is the Kuspo H808S. Now I'll be trialing out this device today and I'll be able to tell you whether or not it's actually any good. The key thing to note if you're not going to buy a Bluetooth device from this particular list is it does need to have Bluetooth BLE. And I think what this is, it's like Bluetooth low energy. And essentially, it's just continuously pushing a ticker via Bluetooth to your phone. Now, there are some watches and bracelets that are compatible too. And again, Pulsar go into some detail about these below here, including some how-to guides. So once you've got your device in hand, what you're going to need to do is go to Pulsoid.net and set up an account with them. You do this by clicking getting started. Now, I already have an account, so I'm just going to log into my existing account. Now, a quick look at the pricing here. We can see they've got an annual plan, they've got a monthly plan, and they've also got a lifetime plan. So loads of different options here. I do remember that they didn't used to have a lifetime plan, so it's quite cool that they've added like a high-priced but a reasonable priced one-off payment. If you can see yourself streaming for more than like, let's say, a couple of years or whatever, you get really good value from that lifetime plan. But you do save some money by getting the annualized plan as well. So for $35.99, you can get the annual plan, which is 40% off the monthly price. So what do you actually get for the bro plan? You can choose from 40 plus widgets. You can customize them. And there's also some integrations as well, which we'll get into a little bit later on. There's also a load of other stuff you can do. For example, customized widgets, images, and things like that. They've also got a lot of different special games and stylized seasonal widgets. For example, Halloween, Christmas, and so on and so forth. So I'm just going to click on my own dashboard here, which is pretty cool that they've got a dashboard available. And one cool thing that I noticed straight away is they've got some overall statistics here that are logged. So you can see how many hours you've brought cast using the Pulsoid app, what your minimum and max heart rate is, and also what your average heart rate is. I just want to say before we get any further with this, okay, my average heart rate was high because I was only playing spooky games and I hate spooky games. Like I genuinely hate them. All right, so don't judge me. 
It's pretty cool. You can see here that they've been updating this app throughout the course of time, literally like pretty much on a weekly or every couple of weeks, there's a new major update. For example, automated clips feature in Discord integration. Now this particular integration, I've not tried it out, but I think this is a really cool idea. What this is, is whenever your heart rate spikes to a certain level, the Discord integration with Pulsoid allows a clip to be created of that particular moment and then sent to your Discord for your community to take a look at. And you don't have to do anything. Literally once it's set up, it just sends those clips to a specific channel and I just think that's a really cool idea. There are also some other integrations. Again, we'll get onto those a little bit later. I'm just going to have a quick look and browse around some of the widgets that are available. These are the free widgets that are available and they're pretty cool widgets. As a start for 10, the free ones are pretty good. And remember, you can also apply filters and stuff like that to these to make them even better. They're certainly enough to get you going, particularly if you don't have the money to upgrade to the paid version. Now, if we just scroll through here, we can see which ones are included on the bro plan and which ones are free. So basically, we can go through the app here and take a little look at what we want to go for. Now, I remember last year there was something like 20 or 30 of them, and now they've got a lot more of them available. I still think that the Phasmophobia one is one of the best ones available, but it's quite nice that they've now also got a Pride Heart outline available now, which is really cool. Is this like a GTA one? Yeah, they've got a GTA. I'm rather confused about the SpongeBob Burger one, though. Huh. <laughs> This one here looks like it's a red frame overlay light. So this is an actual outline of the whole screen as the overlay. So there's not even like a, a, a heart rate monitor per se. It's just a pulsation over the top of the a screen. So for me now, I'm going to keep it simple. I'm just going to go with this one here, the default ECG, because I think that's quite a simple, nice looking one. Now we do have immediately a Pulsoid browser source, and this is what we're going to copy and paste into OBS Studio or Streamlabs OBS later as a browser source, just so that this can pull the data. But for now, we just want to configure this. So let's give it a different color. Let's make it... I'm going to go with white. Let's keep it nice and uh, clean, but like a slightly off-white color. There you go, like a gray color. So we can now adjust the thickness of this, but again, you can also resize the browser source in the streaming software as well. So you've got a little bit of flexibility there. I'm going to actually make this a little bit thinner. I think it'll look pretty cool. We'll save the settings there. Now, just to check that this is working, we can copy this now, open a new tab, and paste that browser source. Now, there's no data being pulled from the device to the mobile through to this app. And so on this widget here, we're not seeing any data or any browser source. So now it's at this point, we need to get the heart rate monitor out of its packaging and put this around our chest. The device itself needs to sit just above your chest bone, exactly where your heart is located. Now, most of the straps that you'll get will come with like an adjustable strap here. Literally, you can just adjust the thickness of it. I think for me, I'm probably gonna have to <laughs> I'm a thick boy. <laughs> No, I'll give myself some credit. Let's, let's wind it in a little bit. Then we got the device itself, which just needs to clip to the heart rate monitor. And the way that that happens is it's literally got buttons here that clip into place. One, two and that's it done. Now, just a quick word of warning, this particular one doesn't have it, but sometimes the batteries will have like a little bit of plastic underneath it to stop it from actually draining the power of the battery whilst these things are in storage at the warehouses that they're stored at before they're shipped to you. So you might just have to open the device and make sure that there's not like a bit of plastic separating the device itself and the battery. So the device is now connected. I've got it strapped to my chest here, as you can probably just about see here. Now, because I've connected it and my heart is actually now pushing to the device, the device is now pushing via Bluetooth, a signal to the mobile. So if you don't see the device in the Pulsoid app straight away, try putting the device actually on and then scanning for the devices. And you also need to make sure that Bluetooth is turned on on your phone and that it can scan for devices. So I can see straight away because I've got the app open and because it's detected the heart rate as shown on screen, it's showing the heart rate monitor and now it's actually displaying something within the browser source. And this is what we're gonna be pasting into the app on OBS Studio. I can just see now now, and I'll demonstrate this. I'm going to take off the heart rate monitor so it won't be pushing any data. And what should happen is this immediately stops. Now, on this particular device, I did just hear a little beep just to signal that it was actually turned off and not receiving a heart rate. I'm officially dead, according to this device. I just hit refresh on this browser source and now the heart rate is no longer there. But again, if I just click it back on again, the app on my phone will start to pick up a heart rate monitor once again. I heard an audio signal from this particular device to signal that it was working. And once again, in the browser source, we can see that it's picking up a signal and there's a graphical interpretation. Now, don't be afraid of reaching out to Pulsoid if you're having trouble with this. They obviously want to help people get the most from their app. So feel free to email them, contact them on their Discord. There's all kinds of different ways you can contact them. So we've done the difficult part now. We've set up an account. We've got it connected to our phone. We're wearing the device itself. Now all we need to do is simply add it to OBS Studio and literally we can start doing the creative stuff at that point. So I'm going to copy the browser source. I'm now going to go into OBS Studio and I'm going to click on the 
plus icon here. We're going to click on browser source and I'm going to call this HR monitor. Now, obviously, this will default to the OBS placeholder. I'm just going to paste in the URL for it and click OK there. We can see straight away the heart rate monitor is being picked up and we can now adjust the size of this and place it where we want. Now, I'm going to do something pretty cool. I'm going to integrate it into my camera. I want it the perfect width of the camera. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to right click this heart rate monitor and go to filters. I'm going to add an effect filter and a color correction. I'm going to make it less opaque. So I'm just going to drop it down to around about 25, maybe maybe 10. And there we go. It's a little bit crude because I've only spent a minute or so doing this, but we've now got my heart rate monitor being displayed on OBS Studio. It's the exact same process for XSplit, Streamlabs OBS, or whatever broadcasting software that you are using. Now, the other cool thing about Pulsar is you can add more than one heart rate monitoring widget to your stream. So I'm now going to add here another one, which is a slightly different one. It's the Pride Heart, and we can see exact same process. We could perhaps put this in the corner and there you go we got multiple widgets from the same app and this is all completely free unless of course you want to upgrade to the bro license where you get all those other widgets as well so some of the widgets you can actually customize as well which i think is really really cool so for example we can choose here lots of different color schemes and when you hit certain brackets of heart rates it will change the color of the text in this particular example so i'm just going to save settings on that copy that widget url and add this to obs studio as well and now i can just resize this and place it wherever i want to. This is very, very crude. I would not normally choose to have this layout. Probably be a little bit more creative with it than this is. And now I'm going to do some thing to raise my heart rate. Maybe I just hold my breath or something. It works. It works. It literally works perfectly. Oh my God, I'm going to have to go and have a sleep now to recover from this. <laughs> final thing I'm just going to talk about is actually some of the different integrations they've got. So I've already mentioned the Discord integration, which I just think is a brilliant integration in itself. One thing I've picked up from the indirect dealings I've had with Pulsar, they just seem like a really cool company. They seem like they care about their product and they care about streaming and streamers. They want to give people more interactivity on their stream. They do have integration with Lumia, which can basically use lighting. For example, you can use Philips Hue Light or Nano Leafs and basically the lighting will react to your heart rate monitor. So as your heart rate gets higher, you can, for example, get it so that the color of your lighting will change color to red. Now, I've not had time to try that out for this video, but I'm definitely going to be trying that out for sure. And I just think it's a really cool integration. It's a brilliant added value function from Pulsoid. And I definitely congratulate them on adding cool little widgets and integrations like that. So there you go. Once again, don't forget to click on the Gleam link below to enter the giveaway for this heart rate monitoring device so that you can receive it just in time for Halloween. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button and have a wonderful day. Take care.